morning, my name is Josh of Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed forecast update for April 9th, 2025. A lot to get through today, you can see it calm, cool and collected over in the east, a cold front moving through through South Australia now and developing low pressure up in the Northern Territory, which is where we're going to start off this forecast update. We do have a low pressure system that's expected to develop into a full blown tropical low in the next 48 hours, which will then in turn become the next tropical cyclone, most likely over West Australian waters, but it could form closer to the Northern Territory side of things. This system here has a long long future ahead of it by the looks of things. All major forecast models tipping for this to be a feature that we're going to have to live with for the next two weeks at least pretty much. And you can see it's really now beginning to get itself together over the top of Arnhem Land, uh, just the north of Arnhem Land actually. Some good convection firing up this morning and you can see plenty of rainfall now developing on the radar imagery north of Darwin. This system here is moving quite quickly towards the west and that's a trend that's expected to continue. It's also dragging in a lot of moisture over the Gulf of Carpentaria and over in the Coral Sea and you can see some heavy rainfall and some heavy thunderstorms moving through the northern areas of the Cape York Peninsula. Far North Queensland is going to be a place that I'll get to in just a few minutes, so stick with me, but the immediate forecast for this tropical low slash tropical cyclone coming up right now. So the system is expected to continue developing over the next couple of days. You can see based off the east and west forecast, which is one thing that I'm going to be using right now. Keep in mind a lot of the other forecasting models are calling for very different things from this cyclone right now. Not, a, not so much in the short term, but there is a, still a decent amount of uncertainty in regards to this system's potential future. But you can see this system here developing nicely throughout the remainder of today. It's really getting its act together right now and a, and a defined low pressure center is very close to developing. It's then going to head into the Timor Sea through tomorrow and by the looks of things it's going to continue intensifying, really slow down its motion actually but continue intensifying through Thursday and into Friday and by this weekend we're expecting a full blown tropical low or tropical cyclone to be developing by Sunday in the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf just to the north of Western Australia. As it moves north of Columbaroo and the Kimberley region of WA through Sunday it's going to continue development and you can see through Monday and Tuesday intensification kicks in and this becomes a proper full blown tropical cyclone by at least uh, Tuesday but probably more likely on Monday. Conditions looking very healthy for the system and as such intensification which could be rapid at times will continue through Tuesday and into Wednesday and as we get out towards mid-April we're expecting the system to then linger well out to sea offshore from Western Australia before a stalling motion kicks in and then this system swings back around to the West Australian co uh, coastline or down towards the south and weakens down there. So yeah this system as you can see is really going to be a feature that's going to be on the cards for the next two weeks or so. We're out on the 23rd of April now and this fall cast picture and you can still see its remnant energy kicking out well to the northwest of WA and this is typically when winter begins to really be, uh, get a grip over the southwest and western Australia to have a tropical cyclone offshore it certainly does highlight the how long and extended this wet season has been for parts of western Australia. Now there are some contrasting pictures between major forecast models you can see the GFS bring this up to tropical cyclone status about 24 hours earlier but it's got a more defined track heading due west pretty much with that intensification before it gets out towards Christmas Island before making that U turn as a reasonably strong tropical cyclone and then that jog down to the south or the southeast at times before what looks like it could be a landfall on Exmouth sometime around the 23rd. Now tropical cyclone landfalls between Broome down to Carnarvon at this time of the year they are not unheard of and in fact they're more common than you might think with one happening every couple of years or so so this system here has the good chance based off precedence alone to make that landfall around the Carnarvon and the Exmouth area but at this point in time it's way too far out in the future and you can see the contrasting pictures between major forecast models and the icon for forecast doesn't go out that far but the axis is also not really calling for much to be uh, happening by around that time in terms of a WA tropical cyclone impact so it does go to show that there are still some discrepancies between major forecast modeling but it is certainly worth noting now that the chance of a tropical cyclone is uh, very high now offshore from Western Australia and the chance of that landfall is now beginning to increase between Carnarvon up towards Broome. No need to panic at this point in time if a landfall does happen it's going to happen after the 20th of April by the looks of things that's where all reasonable forecasts are pointing towards and in terms of impacts, it doesn't look like it's going to be an overly strong tropical cyclone landfall either, but certainly something worth keeping in the back of your head at this point in time that you may have something coming for you in about two weeks. If you're not interested in checking back in on the forecast every day, I recommend checking in around the 15th or the 16th of April. We'll have some definitive answers by then. We're going to know exactly what the system's going to be doing if it does make it out to Christmas Island and then whereabouts it does eventually U-turn and what direction it's going to head. And that should happen sometime around the 15th, 16th or 17th of April. So if you're not interested, of all the faff in the forecast then check back in around then but there will be some development uh, day by day and again the chances could be completely killed off that this system does end up going for Western Australia. It certainly is an interesting time that's for sure it could end up being a rather turbulent time for Western Australia typical for the stuff for this time of the year as I have said but still interesting indeed. The Gulf of Carpentaria is going to keep itself really busy and you can see by Tuesday next week we are expected to see the development of another tropical on the Gulf of Carpentaria up more closer to the PNG side of things and then the system here moving into either the northern territory 
or heading over towards far north Queensland. Either way, it does look like we're not going to be seeing a strong tropical cyclone out of this, but we could still be seeing a respectable intensity tropical low or a category one strength tropical cyclone going in for the Northern Territory or into the Gulf of Carpentaria and delivering some impacts to the Cape York Peninsula. Will be interesting to see, that's for sure. And you can see again, major forecast models all calling for more or less the exact same thing. Even the axis is calling for something uh, into the long range, which is a good sign considering we've now got three forecast models completely on board with pretty much the exact same forecast for actually, if you count the icon forecast model. So it definitely looks like by around Monday or Tuesday next week, we're gonna see a tropical low begin developing in the Gulf of Carpentaria. And that's gonna have some major ramifications on the North Queensland weather scene. So not only will we be seeing some heavy rainfall across the Northern Territory and the Carpentaria coastline in uh, all, but we'll likely be seeing some heavy rainfall across Northern Queensland. And let's dive into that forecast right now because there are a lot of details to get through. So major forecast modeling is now tipping the good chance of some very heavy rainfall accumulations, not so much in the short term on the forecast, but later on uh, as a plane flies overhead by the sounds of things through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday next week, some heavier falls can be expected up in far North Queensland, and especially for the danger rainforest. Again, reciprocated between major forecast modeling at this point in time. So there is a very good chance of this materializing pretty much exactly how the forecast models are saying. And you can see between the GFS and the Eastman Bear forecast model up to about four or 500, potentially up towards 600 millimeters coming in for the next two weeks. Rainfall right now is pretty much non-existent. A few showers streaming in from the Coral Sea at this point that are carrying some lighter falls. There was a little bit of rain up in the Daintree rainforest last night uh, that delivered a couple of millimeters here and there, but rainfall not expected to be widespread for the next couple of days. A few showers moving through for the Casper Coast and especially up into the Daintree rainforest over the next couple of days. They will likely get heavier as we draw out the end of the week. We'll likely be seeing some heavier showers come in tomorrow night around the Daintree rainforest and especially north of the Cairns, some heavier falls possible there. But in terms of heavy showers at the Casper Coast, they begin to pipe up by Friday evening by the looks of things. So some heavier falls expected through Friday and in towards Saturday. Uh, that's kind of the precursor energy streaming in from the Coral Sea into the Gulf of Carpentaria through Friday, Saturday and Sunday, which is where those heavier showers are going to come through. And then those showers expect to weaken off uh, for the most part. A few showers here and there through Sunday, Monday and Tuesday for the Cassari Coast and some heavier falls are possible. And then as this tropical low development so it develops over in the Coral Sea, uh, a lot of factors very much dependent on where the system does go. Uh, and that'll have major ramifications on how much rainfall or how little rainfall we can expect up in the Cassari Coast and into the Danger Rainforest. Now, considering the nature of this event here, I am expecting the rainfall accumulations in the Daintree to be slightly wetter than those on the Casper Coast, just considering the northerly uh, based of this uh, low pressure system and monsoon trough, I reckon that the rainfall is just going to be dragged that little bit up further towards the north and as such the Daintree rainforest likely to pick up some more rainfall, but some good falls nonetheless expected on Friday and into Saturday around the Casper Coast as well. And as I have said, widespread falls between 150 out to about 400 millimetres can be expected with isolated totals up to 500 or even 600 millimetres meters also on the cards in the Daintree rainforest. Now, uh, Cairns should pick up a healthier helping of rainfall. I know we haven't been saying that in the last couple of forecast models so uh, or forecast videos, so again, Cairns is a little bit of a flip-flop on the forecast this morning, but up to 150 millimeters can be expected for Cairns, a bulk of that coming through on Friday and into Saturday morning, and falls between 50 to 180 millimeters can be expected widespread through the Atherton Tablelands. Rainfall accumulations, as you know, dropping off substantially as you get further inland, but nonetheless, some good falls that could feed into the Herbert River catchment and then some of the Johnston and the Tully Rivers and their tributaries along far north Queensland and especially into the Daintree River as well. Some great falls can be expected in those locations. So minor flooding through this weekend cannot be written off at this point in time. Heavy falls are not expected around the Cardwell Gap area and down towards the Hinchbrook Island area. It is again highly dependent on what rainfall does develop and if we do see a southerly shift in what rainfall or where the rainfall is going to be located. And if that does happen, I'll be the first to let you know. But at this point in time, it doesn't look like rainfall is going to be a problem for those locations, which is good because I don't need any more of the stuff, that's for sure. And a couple of lighter showers expected down through the Whit Sundays, down through Mackay with up to 50 millimetres coming through in the next 14 days. An isolated falls up to 150 millimetres possible over the next 14 days into some of the mountains adjacent to Mackay, and then down towards Rockhampton and Yapoon. Rainfall accumulations down there anywhere between 20 to 100 millimetres over the next 14 days. Interesting stuff. It's good that southwestern Queensland is remaining dry. A few thunderstorms expected here and there out there, but they'll be very isolated, very sporadic, and again, much later on into the forecast period. So rainfall accumulation aren't going to be anything grand out there, which is good news for them. They definitely don't need any more rainfall, that's for sure. And then, like I said, over in the last couple of forecast updates, we've got those showers now beginning to develop along the uh, the southeast Queensland and northeastern New South Wales coastline. You can see them now beginning to develop on the uh, radar and satellite imagery, streaming in quite quickly, powered by or driven by a high pressure ridge that's building quite strongly and quite quickly over New Zealand. And this is driving in those showers that are coming out of the southeast at this point in time. So a bit of miserable weather up in the northeast of New South Wales 
not too uncommon for this time of the year. Showers expected to continue throughout the remainder of today. They're not expected to be too heavy with a chance of a storm up on the Sunshine Coast. A few showers also continuing through Thursday and into Friday as well. Showers will get heavier through Friday, at least offshore from New South Wales. And we're expecting some widespread showers and thunderstorms into Friday night and into Saturday and Sunday across northeastern New South Wales and southeastern Queensland. As that high pressure ridge continues to weaken and we get another one building over in the Tasman Sea, we'll likely see the rainfall swing out to the southeast and showers expected to continue over the next 14 days, but they will continue to weaken off and they're only going to fully disappear when we see a low pressure system drag them away, which doesn't look to happen until at least late April by this uh, forecast, or at least on this forecast modelling here. Rainfall accumulations over the next week are going to be anywhere up to about 150 millimetres of the wettest of locations. Again, it doesn't really look like the forecast modelling here wants to load in, but you can see seven day rainfall accumulations anywhere up to about that 100 millimetre mark with widespread falls between 40 and 60 millimetres being the norm up in the northeastern corner of New South Wales, and then falls between 10 and 40 millimetres down towards Coffs Harbour, Nambucca Heads, and out towards Ebor, uh, and then inland down towards the Barrington Tops as well. Rainfall accumulations up to about 25 millimetres there. Negligible falls as you get down on the New South Wales coastline, Sydney about uh, 20 to 25 millimetres, but rainfall accumulations won't be anything uh, extreme further south of there. And then heading up into the north for southeast Queensland, falls between 40 and 80 millimetres expected over the next week or so, with the heaviest falls down on the Gold Coast, and some isolated heavier falls expected between Maroochydore Door up to about Rainbow Beach, including Noosa in those locations there. So some decent rainfall accumulations, that's for sure. And I know for a fact that they won't be saying no to this rainfall. Accumulations on the southeastern corner of the country looking really miserable, at least for the next seven days, and also not much better for the next 14 days. Some decent falls right now over the Air Peninsula, or have moved through the Air Peninsula, and then down in towards Kingscote, and then down through Kangaroo Island, and heading just towards the southeast of Adelaide at this point in time. Rainfall accumulations have been in the high single digits to early double digits overnight, which is laughable, but that is how desperately they need the rainfall, where we're talking about good news coming in with single digit rainfall accumulations there. Anything now counts for the South Australian parts of Western Victoria. They do desperately need that rainfall. As a weak cold front uh, begins to develop down in the Great Australian Bight, interesting stuff, but again, not providing the rainfall that they do desperately need out there, and extreme drought conditions ongoing for the southeastern corner of the nation, including Western Victoria and through South Australia, and even parts of Tasmania as well. Those drought conditions are now really starting to get quite ugly for the northern half of Tasmania. These drought conditions are expected to continue, and you can see as we push this forecast out until this coming weekend, those droughts are just getting worse and worse and worse across South Australia and Victoria. Hopefully a little bit of reprieve later on next week as we see low pressure systems begin to build in the Great Australian Bight, and as such, we could be seeing some rainfall much later on in towards April, but I wouldn't get your hopes up at this point in time. Rainfall accumulations, whilst they could be good, and the forecast modelling is suggesting up to 100 millimetres of rainfall for some of the southern parts of Victoria through the next 14 days, again, I wouldn't really be keeping getting your hopes up at this point in time. Rainfall accumulations can die off as quickly as they build on the forecast modelling for these locations. Interesting stuff and certainly something worth keeping an eye on for South Australia and Victoria, though, and even down towards Tasmania with rainfall now beginning to build for those locations. The southwest of Western Australia is now fully into their transition period. It's beautiful not having to sleep with the air conditioning on, that's for sure, across the southwest of WA into the Perth metro area. Rainfall is now beginning to build pretty much everywhere but Perth over the next 14 days, and you can see that classical precursor winter rainfall up into the northern wheat belt and parts of the Murchison region beginning to build now in the forecast modelling. This is generally speaking a sign of what is to come. Rainfall now really beginning to build for these locations, dragged down by cold fronts, and it's just combining moisture from the Indian Ocean down into the Southern Ocean here, and that's why we get these rain bands that begin to develop on the forecast models up in this part, or well, this neck of the woods for Western Australia, northern weed belt into the Murchison, and even the southern parts of the Gascoigne, we can see some good rainfall in these locations. But uh, everywhere but Perth is basically expecting up to around 10 to 15 millimetres over the next 14 days, with isolated higher falls around the Esperance area by the looks of things. I'll talk to you about what that means. You can see a few showers still lingering offshore right now, and a few showers still expected throughout the remainder of today across the southwest capes. But overall, looks like it's going to be a nice day across some of these locations, especially further inland. But I look out to my window right now, and it's looking a little bit cloudy, but I'm, that might be because the sun hasn't properly risen here and it's still pitch black. Showers continuing through Thursday for the Southwest Capes, clearing out on Friday as a low-pressure trough develops, and we could be seeing a relatively warm day on Friday with a couple of thunderstorms Friday night and into Saturday morning across some locations into the southern wheat belt, developing rainfall on Sunday with widespread storms expected out into the wheat belt and some rainfall, which could be heavy at times through the northern parts of the wheat belt. Showers then combining uh, as that low-pressure system moves up for the Southwest Capes on Monday, but it looks like Perth is going to miss out on that. And then a cold front brushes up on Wednesday and Thursday next week, and it looks like, again, Perth is going to miss out on that. We're still too early on in the season for these cold fronts to really smack the southwest of Western Australia and for the rainfall to break it past the southwest capes and up into the Perth metro area. It's still a big climb for those, for those cold fronts to make 
it up to these locations and as such the rainfall now still quite disappointing on the forecast modeling but it's not the worst thing in the world and certainly something to get excited about because it is now on the forecast models and it's certainly done with summer that's for sure we're not going to be seeing any long hot stretches of days up into the high 30s we do still have that warm day coming through on friday as i mentioned at 30 seconds ago or so you can see temperatures expected to climb into the mid 30s across the southwest of western australia and that's again because of that west coast trough beginning to develop, to develop and we could be seeing temperatures into the mid 30s into the northern wheat belt and even the high 30s as you get up towards Geraldton, Mullawa and those locations 38 and looking into those locations Murchison 38 and Gascoigne Junction actually going up to 40 so it is going to be a rather hot day by the looks of things Perth expecting a top of 34 at least on this forecast modeling here but things quickly cooling off on Saturday by the looks of things and you can see 26 or 27 degrees expected to be, to be the maximum through Saturday interesting stuff that's for sure and it shows you the power of a uh, of a west coast trough and that low pressure and what it can do for the southwest corner of western australia can swing the weather violently in one way or another whether it's hot or whether it's wet and stormy that has been a long-winded forecast update, that's for sure. There's not an awful lot more to talk about. Certainly something worth keeping an eye on, though, is over in the northern parts of Western Australia. There's going to be a lot uh, to talk about there over the next couple of days. And then following in quick succession is going to be the rainfall for North Queensland, which is going to begin piping up later on this week and into this weekend. Very interesting stuff and certainly something to be keeping us on our toes, that's for sure, as a forecaster. If you have uh, enjoyed the forecast update, then please do get to see leaving a like and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. All of the support lately has been much appreciated. And again, I can't thank thank anybody enough i can't thank the channel sponsors enough their uh support is much appreciated and again uh their names are on screen right now and i could not run the show without them but that is all for me today and i'll catch you all in the next storm goodbye